flag is a core element in most signals. The location on the touchline, the stance of the assistant referee, and even which hand is being used to hold the flag are also elements which can convey important information. During active play, the assistant referee is expected to keep the flag in the view of the referee, changing hands if necessary as the assistant referee's pattern of movement changes. In general, the assistant referee should stop moving and turn to face the field before signaling. While moving, the flag is kept straight down to the side of the assistant referee, regardless of which hand is holding the flag. Even while running, the flag should not be pumped or swung back and forth in rhythm with the run. The non-flag arm should be allowed to move naturally with the running motion. In all signals where the flag is held with a single hand, the flag should be an extension of the arm no matter the angle. The signal for a throw-in is similar to that given by the referee. The arm is raised at a 45 degree angle while holding the flag. As with the referee, the assistant referee holds the flag in the arm appropriate to which team will have possession of the ball on the restart. For example, if the throw-in is awarded to the team attacking the goal to the assistant referee's right, then the right arm would be used to signal. Occasionally, the referee may see a touch on the ball not seen by the assistant referee, resulting in the referee overruling the assistant referee signal. In such a case, the assistant referee must drop the flag, change hands, and then redo the signal to be consistent with the decision given by the referee. The assistant referee lowers the flag as soon as it is clear that the referee has seen and accepts the signal. If the throw-in signal was given with the right hand, at this point, the flag is shifted back to the left hand. While facing the field, the assistant referee uses the right hand to hold the flag straight outward toward the center of the field. The flag is lowered as soon as it is clear that the referee has seen and accepts the signal. At this point, the flag is shifted back to the left hand. Regardless of what corner the kick is being taken from, the assistant referee signals with the flag in the right hand held downward at a 45 degree angle to the side of the body. If at the time of the signal, the assistant referee is close enough to the goal line that the flag would be pointing to a location off the field, the assistant referee should sidestep one or two paces before giving the signal. Sometimes the assistant referee is aware of misconduct not seen by the referee. The assistant referee either places a hand over the badge to suggest a yellow card or over the back pocket to suggest a red card. If a signal is needed to specifically draw the referee's attention for the purpose of stopping play, holding the flag straight upward in the right hand is acceptable, and the indication of the card would then follow making eye contact with the referee. The assistant referee indicates that a goal has been legally scored by stopping and making eye contact with the referee. Once eye contact is made, the assistant referee simply begins to move up the field toward the halfway line. If the goal should not be counted because the scorer had committed an offside violation, the assistant referee should stop and after making eye contact with the referee, proceed to give the standard signal for an offside offense. A ball may occasionally leave the field and then come back into play. In this case, the assistant referee signals by holding the flag straight upward and then after making eye contact with the referee, signals for the correct restart based on how and where the ball left the field. This signal sequence is never used in situations where the ball has clearly left and remained off the field. When play should be stopped for an offside violation, the assistant referee indicates this information to the referee by initially raising the flag straight upward in the right hand. This signal is maintained until one of two things happens. First and most commonly, eye contact is made with the referee who stops play. The assistant referee then points the flag across the field in one of three positions. Raised 45 degrees if the offense occurred in the far side of the field, straight out if the offense occurred in the middle of the field, or downward 45 degrees if the offense occurred in the near third of the field. Depending on the pregame discussion, the referee may have requested that the final step of the signal be held longer in cases where the restart location is unclear or disputed so that the assistant referee's position on the touchline 
can serve as a marker for where the ball is to be placed. When a penalty kick has been awarded, the assistant referee moves to the intersection of the penalty area line and the goal line to provide assistance to the referee on whether the goal has been scored or whether the goalkeeper engaged in illegal movement that contributed to the goalkeeper preventing a goal. No specific signal is used by the assistant referee for any penalty kick outcome other than the goalkeeper moving illegally. In this case, the assistant referee signals by displaying the flag between the hands and below the waist, or using any other prearranged signal as directed by the referee during the pregame conference. After the taking of the penalty kick, the assistant referee then takes up the specified position if play continues, if there is a goal kick or corner kick, or if a goal was scored. Separate but similar sequences are involved when the assistant referee has seen and intends to signal for a foul which occurred out of the referee's field of view. The signal used depends on the restart appropriate for the offense. First, if what happened was a direct or indirect free kick foul, the assistant referee initially holds the flag straight upward in the left hand if the offense was committed by an attacker and in the right hand if committed by a defender. This signal is maintained until eye contact is made with the referee. The flag is then waved back and forth using the wrist only. If the referee accepts the advice and stops play, the flag is lowered slightly so that it is still raised at a 45 degree angle. Second, if what occurred should result in a penalty kick, the sequence begins the same way as just described, continuing through the waving of the flag. If the referee stops play as advised, in this case, the assistant referee drops the flag and holds it suspended between both hands below the waist. Once it is clear that the referee intends to accept this recommendation by ordering a penalty kick, the flag is lowered and the assistant referee indicates confirmation of the referee's action by walking down the touchline to take the correct position for the penalty kick. Occasionally, the referee may stop play for a foul but then make obvious eye contact with the assistant referee to get his or her opinion on whether the foul occurred inside or outside of the penalty area. If the foul happened outside the penalty area, the assistant referee simply stands still and deliberately holds the flag straight down to the left side. If the foul occurred inside the penalty area, the assistant referee advises a penalty kick restart by suspending the flag between both hands below the waist to indicate that a valid substitution request has been made at a stoppage. The assistant referee holds the flag between the hands above the head until the referee acknowledges the request by allowing the substitution to occur. Once the referee allows the substitution to proceed, the flag is lowered to the side and no further signal is needed. However, it is common for referees to include in the pregame discussion some preferred method for the assistant referee to indicate that a substitution process is completed and play can be restarted. This is often desirable in matches where the local rules of competition allow unlimited substitutions and for substituted players to return to the field. Occasionally, an assistant referee signal is not seen by the referee because his or her attention is directed somewhere else. When this happens, the other assistant referee should mirror the same signal to help the referee become aware and then direct the referee's attention to the original signaler. For example, a substitution is signaled by the assistant referee on the opposite side of the field from where the referee is looking. In this case, the other assistant referee gives the substitution signal, which is more readily seen since it is in view of the referee and the assistant referee then points across the field to indicate that a signal is being given there of which the referee needs to be aware.